Courtesy of Square Enix, I've gone hands-on with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth for over an hour. I experienced the same demo presented at TGS 2023. Watching that demo made me eager, but playing it got me hyped. And just a heads up, all the gameplay you're seeing today is B-roll provided by Square Enix. Now we were permitted to capture our own gameplay, but I goofed and brought the wrong SSD to New York with me so I could not bring my own gameplay home, but rest assured everything I played ran very smoothly. Everything's feeling good even several months in advance, so I'm happy to say that, but again, everything you're seeing today is B-roll. Rebirth is the second entry out of three planned Final Fantasy VII Remake titles. Following the events of the first entry, Cloud and company embark into the further regions of the planet. Rebirth features all the best aspects of Part 1's gameplay and presentation, evolved combat mechanics, expansive areas to explore, more side content, mini-games, and various means of transportation. The hybrid real-time and turn-based combat system is back with new abilities and team dynamics. With several of Cloud's friends along for the ride, you can experiment with your lineup between battles. I tried fighting alongside Tifa and Aerith during my demo, and later with Aerith and Red 13. A lot of the fun of combat for me is determining whose abilities best complement each other. Regardless of my lineup, I never felt punished for trying new things. The reward was discovering new combos most effective toward particular enemy types. The most prevalent new addition is synergy attacks. When one party member's limit gauge fills, you can unleash a brutal attack with a fellow member, resulting in beautiful animations dealing massive damage. I was already into Final Fantasy VII Remake's unique spin on combat, and these new features add more depth to that satisfying loop. The open areas in Rebirth are more like hub worlds akin to games you're likely familiar with such as God of War. During my demo I explored a small slice of a much larger explorable area leading to the industrial city of Junon. Along the way I discovered valuable treasure and resources, environmental puzzles, chocobo chicks that led me to nearby rest spots, and multiple fiends to bring down all while riding around in my trusty chocobo. It's not a new idea, but the hub worlds versus full blown open worlds have been refreshing for me in recent years. Though I did complete the game, I've never been able to get fully into Final Fantasy XV, mainly due to its open world gameplay. I prefer spending time with Seven's characters anyway, but focusing on smaller, meticulously designed spaces usually pays off. I'm embarrassed to admit I couldn't figure out the environmental puzzle I crossed, but seeing as everything else you do in the game is rewarding, I expect the same for completing them. And yes, you can pet the chocobo chicks. Rebirth also includes an item crafting system enabling you to create what you need while on the go. Personally, I get tired of collecting limitless resources in games for minimal purposes. Fortunately, everything I went out of my way to collect while exploring was helpful, notably in crafting potions. Each fiend battle plays out like a mini boss battle and features a set of optional combat challenges. The more you complete, the greater the experience gained. I didn't get a chance to try out any vehicles, but from the recent trailer it looks like some pretty sweet rides are out there. I'm dying to take the segue for a spin. I also missed the supposed mini games in the recent trailer. Between chocobo races and boxing in the old graphics style, it seems like there's plenty of stuff to get into. One of my favorite aspects of Final Fantasy VII Remake is the bold choice to reimagine the story. The first entry sets the expectation, and Rebirth seemingly takes it even further. At the start of my demo, Sephiroth was in my party and playable in a flashback sequence. His abilities seem to revolve around parrying and ranged attacks. His synergy attacks with Cloud are particularly sick. If playing as Sephiroth is merely the onset of Square's reimagined narrative, I can't wait to see what else is in store for Rebirth. A notable part of the flashback's gameplay were multiple paths featuring parkour. In part 1 some sequences across Midgar had Cloud in the game leaping around, but there's even more in Rebirth. It's kind of funny to watch Cloud climb up and down cliffs and shimmy across narrow caverns. Maybe it's the slight stiffness in how it feels to play. It's functional, and makes sense given the nature of the more expensive hub areas, but it's not as smooth as general traversal in combat. To no one's surprise, Rebirth is graphically exceptional. During my demo I played in graphics mode. The frame rate seemed to hover between 30 and 45 frames without any significant drops. Rebirth will launch with a frame rate option as well. I've only played Rebirth for a little over an hour and I couldn't be more excited to play the full game. I barely scratched the surface of a single hub area, the combat's even more interesting, there's a ton of goofy activities to try, and I can't wait to meet new characters and see how the story's evolved. Rebirth launches for PS5 on February 29th of next year. For more on Final Fantasy and all things video games, be sure to stay tuned to COD Connected. And if you have thoughts on anything I've shared today, or if you've played the demo yourself, or you're just generally excited for the game, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.